Good afternoon, everyone. This is Naishad Gadani coming to you from Melbourne, uh, which is just turning its beauty on. It's uh, starting to become sunny, but uh, don't hold on to that hope for a long time. It's going to rain, uh, you know, fairly soon. But welcome to Career Care Package, uh, the weekly LinkedIn live show. And as Nimrata also confirmed, that we are the longest running. LinkedIn live show in the world and we will probably be applying for Guinness Book of World Records also shortly. We just want to make sure that we harness on that. But thank you again for joining us and thank you Renuka and Nimruta joining us all the way from India and it's 6.30 in the morning. That's ungodly hours. So my apologies for uh, getting you up because I mixed up my time my daylight saving timing. So I thought it's 7.30 but it's 6.30. So thank you very much for to you guys for joining us and yes we will be talking to you you about cards against insanity our innovative game but we are going to talk about more creativity and mind map and stuff like that which is i think going to bring a lot of injection of uh, creativity and uh, new thinking in your job search or even career management as well so before we start to chat with nimrata and renuka let's welcome caroline brown Thanks, Nash. And it's fantastic to be here. And Renuka and Imrata, thank you so much for joining us at the ungodly hour of 6.30 in the morning. I thought 7.30 was bad enough. I thought that was an ask. And then when Renuka popped up and said, did you know it's 6.30? We both went, oh. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, and yeah, today we're going to talk about creative ways, really. Like the umbrella theme is creative ways to, to find work. Um, because I think when you, you're looking for work, your mind, your, your stress levels increase and your creativity can decrease. So the idea behind the cards is to give a lot of fresh new ideas. So um, I think great place to start would be start with you, Renuka, just to give people an idea about your background and then you, Nimrata, as well, just to introduce yourself briefly and then let's kick off the discussion. Sure. Thank you, Nishad and Caroline. It's good to be here. And uh, a little about myself. Well, I've been shaping executive careers since 1997, and I'm a founder of Tannet Technology Resources. In 2019, we reinvented ourselves and made a conscious shift to executive and leadership coaching. So now it's called Tannet Executive Coaching. So. Yeah, so I coach leaders through the lens of executive presence, which prepares leaders to engage, align, and inspire people to act. So that is my current thing. So, but I've had about 20 years of experience blend and about four, I think, career shifts. And I'm very fascinated by the way future of uh, careers, leadership, and all is changing to mm. create a more human centric workplace. So yeah. my I idea is on your LinkedIn profile that you started off in IT, is that correct? Yes. You so okay, but we are talking of a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I just uh, it's a really interesting career shift and I I, I looked and went, oh that's fantastic. Yeah. So, so as we go along I can tell you more. But basically yeah. they had started from IT. Uh, in 1997, it got me into the career field when internet first came to India, because yeah. that's when I created my website, www.tannet.com, which is among the first three recruitment websites in India. Oh, wow. And uh, that's what technology. And then I realized that while by doing that, I had moved from technology to career space. Yeah. And since then, I have moved, been in that career space, maybe after 10 years, the Tannet.com was more for IT recruitment, yeah. niche IT recruitment. So that went off very well because there was no niching at that time in recruitment when I'm talking mm -hmm. of 1997. So that's how I came into career space. Then after 10 years I of being there, I saw that there was a lot of, you know, these cookie cutters resume 300 resumes in front of me all look the same yeah <laughs> you just change the name and you could say that it's you know xyz and yeah. that's when i realized it required a change and i stepped into resume writing 
and I did my certification as a professional resume writer, PARW. And again, I think that time after I did it, I realized that there were only three of us in India. Wow. <laughs> so okay. it just went, took me to there. And then while after that, I realized that people, you know, how they are presenting themselves is not working out. And I shifted to being a certified image consultant. And so I normally shifted with certification, not realizing at that time that I was the first batch or the only three. But mm -hmm. that's how the career has progressed. And in 2019, I made a conscious shift to coaching per se. Fantastic. But yeah, so I've had what I call the four first mover career shifts in this last 20 years. Yeah. So it's so, a very unique expertise blend. Yeah. And hopefully we can dig in a bit to that. Nimrata, tell, it'd be great to hear um, a bit about uh, something about what you do and how you support people with the work that you do. Yes, thanks, Caroline. And it's very inspiring to hear about you, Renaka. Yeah. Um, I am an HR professional by training. So I did my MBA specializing in HR from one of India's top B schools, which is XLRI. Uh, previous to that, I have a degree in math, so I'm a maths and an HR person <laughs> and uh, did the regular corporate gigs. So I did the large company, the startup, the big bank, a global role, you know, I had an Asia Pacific role uh, at one of the leading I banks. Um, then I took a break and my break was for um, six years, you know. So I have a break in career for six years and I am married to a military officer. So it was like, okay, what do I do? And then I started, um, then I figured over time that what I'm really good at is helping people figure out their stories and their personal pitch. And that's what got me interested. And one thing led to another. And I've got all my work through references. There's no need for like doing advertisements or anything of that sort. So I work with a couple of firms, um, you know, supporting uh, their employees. I work with a large outsource outplacement firm also, you know, to help people as they work through their, um, you know, their next steps in career once uh, they've been laid off or have let go because of business reasons or downsizing or what have you. And we had a lot of that last year, especially. Um, I also work for HR advice as a HR advisory for startups, etc. Because I have a lot of uh, startup experience. Um, so, and I I enjoy writing. So you'll find me writing often on LinkedIn or in local newspapers and so on and so forth. Um, so, but it's a process of discovery, and I'm now thinking, okay, so what do I do in 2021? So life goes on, but I think at the core, my philosophy is that um, I I think I'm good at uh, you know, understanding what makes you tick and just helping you figure that out. You know, it's not about me telling you, but you realizing the answers yourself. And I think that's at the core of my philosophy. So glad to be on this show. Fantastic. And I think just drawing from the richness of both of your experiences, so like in terms of that theme around creativity and unlocking sort of more creative processes to, to find direction, what are your thoughts on mind mapping as a tool? Renuka, have you used mind mapping as a tool with clients? And how, how does that work if you, if you use it? Yes. So mind mapping is a very, is a visual tool and I am not really a, such an organized person. So for a person <laughs> like me, mind mapping is a tool better than listing and writing. And also mind mapping has been a tool in the past when i have created programs like job search programs or uh, all these executive presence programs i have started i have it had always been starting with the mind map and then i have converted them into modules so yeah. whenever i create a program i really mind map my truth all of that and similarly because it's mind map, when a person is genuinely looking for a job and they're getting trained for that, they can see it and they design their career plan also based on that. Mm -hmm. So yes, mind map is my go-to place when it comes to uh, organizing my thoughts. Mm. So for people that don't know, like, because I'm not 
I'm a list writer. Occasionally I do mind mapping and then I look at it and go, well, I don't know what that means because I'm but how does how does it work? Like what does what it, what kind of mind mapping tools or techniques do you actually use with people? So uh, there are software for it also. So yeah. normally if you're mind mapping, if you can take uh, the software and then you start working with it. So I mind map first, like I did my modules, which say in a job search, I mind map the five steps. Then from those five steps, then we went to what is the next step? Then what would be the tools you would require? So once you have it all in one place, and then you sit back and I just stare at it. <laughs> Once you stare at it, there are so many ideas which come up when you're looking at it at one go. And then once the creativity starts, then there is no end to what you can do with it. So for me, mind map is something where I put my thoughts down on, sit back, stare at it. it sometimes it's one hour, sometimes it's one day, and then it's some, then something happens. <laughs> if I can add, Caroline, for me, yeah. mind mapping has been very personal. So um, one of my very close friends from B school, his kids started doing it, you know. So while you've heard it and all of that. So he did a session for the children. And uh, I learned from them, you know, really like implemented from them. <laughs> And uh, I thought it was great because you didn't have to, you know, you could just summarize your entire chapter of a history book, uh, you know, and into one page. It, it's just great. And I think that started my, you know, sort of entry more into mind mapping with clients. Um, because one of the things I've realized is that, uh, especially when it comes to a career transition, you know, or you're searching for a job, even the most systematic and the best project managers and the most systematic operations managers or, you know, they sort of fumble, you know, because it, it's, it becomes a little personal and they start um, feeling that, oh, uh, maybe I can, uh, they start feeling dejected after one or two things don't, strategies don't work out, you know, whereas, um, I think a technique like mind map, you know, where you have a central idea and then you keep on drawing uh, different things and different strategies that that sort of propels you not to cancel out even the most silliest idea, you know. So you start saying, oh, OK, it sounds silly, but let's just list it down. And, you know, maybe when three options are down, you might go to the silly idea and it might work, you know. So uh, I think it's good because it's sort of... Um, uh, it's very important for people in that stage to actually use a tool um, because um, uh, like I'll give you an example of this data analyst. He's a head, he's a data scientist. He's a head of data science at a large company. But when his role was, you know, made redundant, uh, after three or four calls where he made to his network, he started feeling that, oh, you know, life has ended for me, you know, like there's nothing else. And I'm like, you're a statistician. You know that there has to be a minimum number, like, you know, your N has to be 25 or 30 to hit success, right? Why are you getting so dejected? Then we made him do an exercise and, you know, start talking to maybe an editor of a data magazine. You know, you start approaching many more different possibilities. And that's when you, you at least you get some assignment, you get something to get started. Your, your motivation level gets better, even if you have some, some small successes. And, you know, you feel better and more energized to be on track. So I think it's important to have a tool. And, and I think from that perspective, mind map is great because it's both creative and it helps you, you know, stay on track, be focused and try out different strategies, which is really important, which I think Cards for Insanity, Against Insanity is all about, you know, how do you stop yourself from getting dejected uh, in, in that per it's a difficult time right, for you personally. Nobody else can actually understand what you personally are going through at that point in time, right? So so I think from that perspective, mind map is a great tool. I think it's equally important in mind mapping. It's something that I uh, you know, also do is to ask the right questions too. Because otherwise you get, you know, kind of in sea of information, you don't know where to where to put those information in, right? It, it needs to be put in a context as well so you know if you let's say imagine that you're looking for work you can one side you can put in yourself in the center network 
and then say family and you know friends and acquaintances and you, then you start to draw on that and you think about okay direct approach which are the employers i can direct approach and i think asking the right questions is equally important here uh, now especially in the you know what you say nimruta about people who are transitioning careers mind map works like you're dumping your information that's in your head on a piece of paper because i can imagine that you know it's like it's like when you're looking at yourself objectively it's difficult right it's like what have you done well i've been a data scientist but what kind of skills have you learned i don't know i just look at the computer analyze data and tell my boss that this is the trend but yeah but 10 years you you imparted so many different skills and i think mind map really allows you to portray those skills and then what i think in career transition that the the real value is to match two three different skills and create your own career out of it and i think that's a really great way to see mind map or, or skills and i really like what renuka said sometimes you stare at it right and you're looking at it and you're thinking you know i'm i'm, I'm i know I'm, I'm at the cusp of getting an a great idea but i'm not there yet but i'm going to continue to look at it one of uh, one of her career practitioner friends she said that what she would ask clients to do when they are kind of in this phase of not deciding yet she does say you know just write down what you want to do right and put it on a on a table and what i want you to do is that every day when you finish the work go and look at it and say can you add can you remove stuff out of it or not so in 10 15 days the person has not only written stuff over there but also has taken things out also has put things on and it kind of gives you that that longer period for reflection and then say now i'm going to make these two things work with me so i think it's just these divergent possibilities that people can create uh you know around mind map and especially i think you know job search is very personal job search is quite uh, daunting uh you know even right now as well so I think that's what mind maps kind of really help. And it has helped me. So that's why I think, that's why I put that in this uh, Cards Against Insanity, because if it can help me, it can help other people, um, you know, as well. So, you know, uh, you know, if we can also look at some other sort of creative ways as well to, you know, to use mind map to network or a mind map to, or creative ways to really network and reach out to people. Anything, Renuka, you know, you can add some, uh, you know, light to this conversation around what other creative ways that people can use to, because network in India, networking is huge, right? Uh, you know, and I, I know that I never needed to look for work in India because somebody would say, Nisha, I want you to work for my cousins, brothers, you know, such and such. And I say, yeah, why not? I will go and work for him, right? So tell us about the creative flair that people can use in networking. Renuka and then Nimruta, your take. See, in the mind mapping, again, I just thought, wanted to add, I've used it when it is, when you're stuck in careers. So it really decides that, you know, which focus bubble are you working with, which stage you are working with. Then based on where you are stuck, what is it you need to do there? Then based on what you are supposed to do there, what are the tools, information, skills, and everything you need there? So there are phases in job search where you get stuck because you do not know enough people. So at that point of time, if you create that as a focus area, what am I supposed to do to get to know more people? So a whole mind map can be made around that. So maybe I can, uh, uh, let's say, so when you, I would look at looking at mind map and I'm stuck and look at networking what can you do? Information interviews, uh, talk to the direct uh, uh, to the employers directly. Who do I? How do I build referrals? Who are the recruiters I need to work with? So that mind mapping will take you to a place when you are stuck in a particular phase. And if networking is the solution, is the solution or the place where you are stuck, then 
you use mind mapping to get more creative. I'll just come back to this maybe, but uh, for me, as I said, it is for networking is when you're stuck in a job search. Okay, I'll uh, take over. Um, so I have a very uh, interesting example to share which sort of stuck in my mind. It's an Aussie example, you know. So last year, um, somewhere around August, September or something, um, the... Uh, there was this um, lady who's one of our uh, one of my colleagues from Australia had shared it. Um, her client actually offered to help. She said, "I'm a project manager. I don't have a job right now, but you know what? I'm happy to mentor five young project managers. I have 20 years of experience, and I don't have a job right now, so I can I can mentor. And guess what? Her post blew up. You mm -hmm. know, she got like tons of responses and she got two job offers out of that post mm. you know so it's amazing that to me was something which was completely out of the box thinking you know she mm. and that's that's i think the number one thing about networks they have to be um nurtured you know and you give forward mm. i think a lot of people they expect things to happen magically uh, out of networks when you know if you've not spoken to somebody for 20 years <laughs> you're going to now call them up and ask for a job or even 10 years right so because they've now reached xyz position and you're like oh i worked with them you know when they were just starting or he was my colleague in the next cubicle but you know what do i do so i think that's very important because when you give forward i think the world gives back to you that's that's like a applause for the thing but it does happen number one number two I tell people, and like Neshad said, don't leave out anybody, you know. Literally, your network is your inner network, which is your friends, family, you know, it's and very close professional friends, your outer network, your professional connections, etc. And then the super outer network, which is like people you don't know as yet, okay. So your aim in networking is to reach the people you don't know as yet, you know. Mm. Uh, because the people you know and that next layer, they might or may not have a job directly. But what they what they bring with them is another set of connections, right? So mm -hmm. I have 100 connections. Each of my 100 is 100, so 100 into 100. That's the set I should be mining, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so a very simple thing is what recruiters do, right? So in, in the height of, uh, you know, the war for talent and all, uh, when we used to hire people, we used to get two names out of every client, right? Every candidate. We used to tell them, okay, so you know Java uh, very well. Do you, can you give me names of two more people who know Java? You know, that's mm -hmm. what my recruiters used to do at that point in time, right? And it's exactly what you do with networking. An introduction is better than having, an, having them send an email with your resume to 50 people. Hmm. An introduction to two people, qualified people, is better, you know. Hmm. It's harder, you know, because somebody has to yeah. make a call on your behalf. So it's harder, but it's better, you know. So uh, that should be the other thing, right? So, yeah. so while you will use LinkedIn or Twitter or other places, those are still cold contacts. You know? It's like cold hmm. calling, a little bit better than cold calling but still cold calling. And what are the mm. results of cold calling? If you're in sales, you know that, you know, you will call <laughs> thousand people and, you know, you'll get one bite, maybe if you're lucky. So it's, so your network is your asset. Don't mm. omit out anyone, but just try. And, you know, when you're talking to someone at the end of it, is there anybody else you'd like me to talk to? Or can you mm. introduce me to someone else, you know? And this strategy actually works. Mm. So I've got personally some of my best gigs from, you know, this strategy. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to go back to what you said with that example about the project manager, because I think that's a wonderful example of, and we have a card around it as well, I think you guys might have referenced it, is, is how to put your networking on steroids. So you've pub that person has publicly said, I'm here to help, and everybody's seen how generous that person is. It's been done in social media where it's gone out all over the place which is fantastic so i know we we referenced the twitter card as well and i think you mentioned it Nimrata, about using twitter as a, a job search tool have you seen any great sort of networking stories from from twitter and people using twitter so um 
I'm still, I will not say I'm active on Twitter, right? Mm. But I've been researching it and I've been talking to people who use it very well. So I have friends who have like a million plus followers on Twitter. Wow. Uh, so I, I, I sort of, I will say secondary more. But one of the things is that I think Twitter is great for business scanning, you know. Mm. So if you want to know what's happening in the, in your environment around you, I think it's super real time, you know. So and mm. one of the trends that I'm seeing is that more and more um, CEOs and influencers are out there, you know. So Instagram's like for the fashion people mostly and the causes. And, uh, you know, Facebook is, of course, Facebook. But uh, and LinkedIn is more professional. But Twitter is where you'll find all the business guys, there, you know, and uh, and they're personally there. So, uh, you know, so my my daughter does this um, uh, language learning app. I have forgotten the name, but it's just um, that CEO is out there. So all of these and, and youngsters are writing directly to them, you know, or they're giving feedback directly to them. And most of these people, the company pages may be managed by the company PR person or outsourced. But these senior people also, the pages are managed yet by themselves. That's another change, right? So for you to pitch yourself is not that difficult. And it's not that difficult to have a, if you're an active job search, to have like a okay professional sort of Twitter page. And Twitter is okay to be fun, but not super you know, fun, but you can put some personal stuff, you can put some other stuff. If you're going to go all rabid on a certain philosophy or certain politics, that's different, that's your choice. That may or may not get you a job on Twitter, but, you know, if you're reasonably midline and you, you're you sort of more, uh, you, you can, and you can poke some fun, it's okay. And that's good enough, you know, for your profile to get noticed or for you to connect with people or follow them or write direct messages to them. And they do work. So, I think that's where I've seen, and I actually recommend, especially my C-suite, to even if they're not very active on Twitter, to start, you know, using that and leverage a multi effect. You know, so you can be on Clubhouse, you can be on LinkedIn, you can be on Twitter. Leverage multiple channels to sort of, you know, do that uh, cold calling if you have to. Um, but um, it, it's great. So, for example, Twitter will tell you, uh, you know, and, and Twitter's uh, advanced search is really good. You know, so you can use a lot of Boolean searches, uh, which is the ands and the pluses and quotes. And um, you will get a lot of information across different sources, which is very much real time. You know, of course, like all social media, you don't know what is fake and real. But still, uh, I think it's for business news. It's it's very fast. It's very updated. Um, so that's a big, big advantage of Twitter. And, it, and you can connect with the topmost guys yourself. Like, I'll give you another example. I have this um, um, client's uh, son who did his automobile engineering from Germany. And during this entire pandemic, you know, at some point he reached back home and he had to leave his job over there because I think his, there was a family issue also. And um, so he was specialized in electric vehicles. There are just one or two uh, companies that manufacture electric vehicles at that point in time. And now, of course, it's a plethora. He connected pretty much with all the business heads of the CEOs via Twitter. Uh, you know, and, and he actually got a job also. Because if nothing else, they would either forward the CV down or they would say, okay, yeah. And he had impeccable qualifications. But he wasn't able to reach the right people, you know, in their hiring teams. But Twitter gave him an access directly to the business heads, you know, or the, man or the CEOs. So that was an access, which I think, especially if you're in a niche scale or you're in a leadership role, um, I think Twitter is great because it gives you direct access. Absolutely. I think I've, I, I use Twitter uh, every day and I'm my... My inclination to Twitter is more, uh, you know, trends, as I, as you rightly say, I follow certain trends. I also get my political uh, adrenaline as well, whether that's Australia, whether that's India. I follow certain uh, people that I get, uh, you know, truthful information rather than the mis, uh, you know, misquoted and everything else, uh, which is fun. Um, you know, I'm not. Uh, I, I don't say. I think I'm, I did get few link, LinkedIn live. Uh, you know, I, I kind of stalked people on on Twitter, and I think they were more ready to 
to reply to me on Twitter rather than LinkedIn because uh, you know they were inundated with requests on LinkedIn. So that's that's been my uh, thing on using on Twitter. Um, Renuka, if we can, because you know when we started to talk about bringing both of you guys, you also picked up a card, which is what we ask people to do in our uh, cards against insanity is to write accomplishment stories, and I think that's a that's a very important one because. You know, by default, we, you know, we come from a point of scarcity. I don't have enough or I don't know whether I, I have in it with you. There's Nimrata alluded to the example of a data scientist, you know, and and I think this is one of the things that I asked my clients to do as well is to write f 10 accomplishment stories, five from personal life, five from professional. But I want you to write stories because it, it, it can actually bring you to the right moment of what really changed and how did you get to that? Tell us about this this uh, you know particular card and what do you see? How do you see that applied to career or job search, Renuka? Okay. So for me, what I have experienced is that accomplishments are your most successful tool. Let's say I would say for a job search. So, and for developing the content for any of your job search areas. So, you, if, you, uh, if you keep your accomplishments, achievements, you track them, you can leverage them at all stages of your job search. So, maybe when you even to even discover what your transferable skills are, it also, when you want to expand, as soon as you do with your, uh, when you look at track your accomplishments, you realize you are, you have more skills than what you realize you have. It expands your markets. And then you can, it very well supports your career transition. And of course, the best part, as she wrote in the card, it boosts your confidence. Because when you feel you don't have anything, you have one look at your accomplishment list. And that's when you realize that you are more than what you think you are and this is what also helped you to sell to your employers so for me when i have realized that when you have collected your accomplishments track them and leverage them that is one of the most important content development tools you have in your career toolbox so for I mean, I can keep talking and talking about accomplishments and how important they are because they, I feel, are the crux, literally the crux of your career search. And uh, of course, then we can go through Caroline's card. She has very put it very well about what is accomplishments, how you do the accomplishments, how you write the accomplishments. For me, I would yet say that it is important to track it. Most of us what happens is that we don't track or don't like when we go into a new job, we don't uh, write down what we have done. So maybe what has happened five years back, you have forgotten. So as and when an accomplishment comes, have a log, have an Excel sheet, have an app, have something, just note your accomplishments. And we'll get on later to what is accomplishments and think later mm -hmm. once if you have decided if accomplishment is an important career content tool. Hmm. Do you think, um, Runika, people have trouble identifying what kind of stories are good stories or good, like what is an accomplishment? Because um, I think a lot of people get, they go, well, I haven't got to say, I'm not in sales, so I don't have a percentage increase or I, I can't track the efficiency of something. But that's not necessarily... That, that's only a small proportion of what actually an accomplishment is. So for people that are a bit stuck around what it, what an accomplishment is, what, what would you suggest to them? So accomplishment is beyond your normal duty. So whenever you have done an act, so it's uh, what it's something which is conflict quantifiable so what 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 i call it a pep formula if you have added to a profit if you have added uh, to uh, efficiency if you added to productivity all these actions or which you have done during your job search and if you have can track them and then you have what is the profitability what is the efficiency what is the productivity 
if you can track that maybe you look at what are your promotions you keep i mean and that is one accomplishment if you have said i've done this job i've attended office from 9 to 5 that is not accomplishment accomplishment is something which is connected to a growth either in profitability efficiency productivity you've got a client and so that is where you start looking at accomplishment and normally it is quantifiable you have to if you can quantifiable then you are elevating your accomplishments so and what and so like maybe it is some special skills any certificates and licenses which you have any company sponsored awards maybe you have decreased your cost somewhere your streamline procedures your promotions any special projects you have successfully completed so when we sit with our client when i start asking them these questions i have uh, i have created a like what i call an accomplishment sheet and you have to jog their memory for whatever they have forgotten so there is so keep asking them questions they look at their previous 360 what letters they have got of from clients what are the people saying about them so if you i have so i asked them at least there are about 10 15 questions which actually jogs their memory and brings out what they have done which they thought was regular work but actually it was an accomplishment they can write it as an accomplishment so yeah i think they are having a those list of questions to jog your memory is important and of course the first lesson is write it down as it happens yeah that's and nimrata do you use um, the storytelling approach in the work that you do with your clients uh yes we do and um you know i i i think what renuka has said is brilliant because you have to have like a like a repository first right um i will add to it um one more thing which is align your communication to the audience who's going to hear it okay so uh if you're going from a large company and well there aren't any other jobs in the large companies but the jobs are in the startups okay so what you want to talk about is um maybe some entrepreneurial experience that you've had you know so i will say make that make that master list of your 10 to 15 big story first and make sure your if each story will typically tick many boxes you know we call them competencies in hr language right so they will tick many boxes so it might be about perseverance it might be about you know cost cutting it might be about analytical skills it could be about grooming a successor or at working in times of adversity you know so Uh, I, I typically tell people that before you go for an interaction, especially online, is so easy. Just on the left side of the page, write down the top headlines of these stories, you know, and make sure that in that forty-five minute interaction, you've told five to seven stories. You know, the best part about these interviews is people know everything and then they don't say it. You know, <laughs> so it is like I didn't say it because you know well, that never came up. I'm like you have to be. conscious this is a selling presentation right it's a pitch you're connecting and you're connecting to what they want okay not what you want but what they want right so um read the job description carefully you know research the people you're going to be talking with you know check their background and and be aware of the trends you know you should know what that that industry is all about what's happening over there you know you're getting into an industrial uh, industry where the margins are really less so what are the strategies that others are using what would you propose what have you done for similar problems in the past so stories what they do is that when uh, uh, when they when people talk about these achievements somewhere interviewing is also gut feel and you know it's it's like people are imbibing and get understanding and getting a sense that oh okay we can trust this person because he or she has done this before you know that's the trust that you have to generate so stories with all their achievements and accomplishments help generate that trust but you have to be smart about using these stories you know you can't just go and say something 
um, that I, you know, did this and it has nothing to do with the job you're applying for, you know. So be, be um, uh, sensible and conscious about that. And I think just if you practice the stories uh, a couple of times, you're set. You, sh you should know the approach more importantly, that you have to back up with data. That is more important, you know. And keep your stories. Um, another thing I will add is keep your stories to two minutes. Don't exceed two minutes because if you've got an interaction of 45, 40 minutes, um, there's introduction, there's some chit chat there. The person has to talk also. The interviewer will also talk in between. If you exceed too much and you talk 10 minutes and one accomplishment, you will not have time to pitch your other stories, you know. So a lot of times the reason why people are not able to pitch their stories is because they uh, spend too much time on one, you know. So it's important to know and sense the audience interest also. You know, are you losing their interest? Don't get carried away just because it was a big thing for you. You know, you want an Olympic gold medal may not be that relevant to that person. If the person's interested, sure, carry on. But if the person's like, you know, you feel you're losing their interest, just pipe down a bit and, you know, and ask, is there anything else you'd like to hear on this? And just, you know, move on. So I think that's also important. I remember when yeah. one, one of the time I was coaching a client on interviews and he, after finishing that, he said, can you, can you go and attend my interview? Because you sound more confident about myself than me, I'm, you know, I was just working on his stories and how does it say, and I was just making things up. And he said, you are, you know, my stories inside out, man. Can you, I said, I said, just because I'm Indian doesn't mean that you can outsource everything to me, right? You can, I think you got to do it by yourself. Okay. This is just a, uh, a joke that I wanted to put in. Um, uh, but yeah, so we are coming to an, uh, you know, an end, any, any parting, uh, you know, thoughts, anything else that you would like to comment on before we wrap up, Renuka? Yeah, so I was just trying to connect your mind mapping and accomplishments, which we have said. Of course, accomplishments you can use at the interview stage, but they can be used everywhere, even in your resume. As I said, don't use the word responsible for. It's better to write an accomplishment instead over there. And of course, as she said, you have to map it to it. Uh, so what currently I have used is something called intentionality mapping. So you mind map, when before going for an interview, you mind map your intentionality for that interview. So, so that becomes, and it's like a one little card which you have in the middle, which you have for whichever job you're doing. So before you go for the job, you know what is happening. You mind map your intentionality and from at that point of time, you can uh, understand, as you said, there are five, six things you know you have to do. So maybe when you pick up your three, four stories, which will work for this, because assuming you've done your research before, assuming you know what the uh, client is looking for, you have mapped your skills and your competencies to what they're looking for, you can pick up which are the three, four stories and mind map that into that, plus whatever else is there which you need to do. So there'll be about four or five questions which you have, which will be questions on intentionality and mind map that, put it in a card and carry that card with you to an interview. And then when you are looking at it, you will not forget your stories. You will arrive on time. You will be dressed and to look the part. All those things which go into that intentionality of what you want that interview to come up with, you map, mind map it into a card and then carry the card to an interview. That's Excellent. what Sharon's just said. Um, oh, just a couple of things just in the comments. Um, Sharon Davey, who's also been on our show, absolutely brilliant um, lady, has just said, loves the mind mapping intention intentionality sorry I'm stumbling over my words but yeah I love that it's a beautiful reminder of what you want to achieve from that um it, it's in your pocket so you can refer to it if you want to and it's a deliberate kind of putting yourself in the right right mindset as well I think that's absolutely brilliant so thanks for sharing that Renuka um Nimrata do you have any sort of final pearls of wisdom to beat 
beat Ren what Renuka said there. <laughs> Not that you have to do that, but um, yeah. Yeah, but I I love this this word intentionality is amazing because I think it just puts um, what I've been saying in a much better way and more focused and more positive uh, you know approach because uh, you know you have the mindset that you're going to get get what you want you will get it you know in mm -hmm. some way or the other so I think that's like the starting point always um, uh, no real pearls of wisdom uh, I'm a learner myself. But I will say this, that um, um, I think that, uh, you know, something that also Renuka said that uh, things don't happen overnight. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you have to mull and sleep with those thoughts. Things happen over time. So give yourself time and space and don't beat yourself up if your career isn't going. And be, be open to ideas, be excited about things. You know, I think that's how it works. Um, also... Um, this is this is not some as i said it's not going to deliver results overnight so if you're in the directionally figure out what you want to do you know directionally and start jotting down in your mind map or whatever diary but keep something and never spend my personal thing is never spend more than two hours a day on networking or job search and all of that because it saps energy out of you mm. you know and then you start to get dejected and disappointed take it as a process and nurture and grow your networks, um, you know, get your pitch correct, get your stories right, um, do your homework right. And uh, as she, and she said another very interesting thing, which is write down your accomplishments as they happen. You know, mm. I call it like an accounting thing. I tell my people that, and pretty much the same thing. I said, do you remember what you ate for breakfast or 10 weeks back? You don't, right? <laughs> so, you know, uh, that's one more reason to, uh, to write down. And two, um, think of it like accounting, you know, so accountants close their books every month, even if you do like, you know, by fifth of a month, I'm going to just, you know, pick up what happened last month and just write that down. Even that is okay, but don't make it more than a month. You know, if you can't do it on daily, like a critical incident diary or whatever, at least a month is your outer limit for remembering, mm -hmm. you know, what highlights have happened, not more than that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I said, take care of yourself first. Um, network, do all the right things, um, do your mind maps, but fundamentally put yourself at the center, believe in yourself and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Things will happen, but you start mm -hmm. beating yourself up or neglecting your health, etc. Then, then it goes downhill from there. You know, mm -hmm. so that I think is more important, especially mm -hmm. when you know you're in a pandemic, it's relatively lonely, you're not meeting a lot of people. You know, the world has changed, right? So you're relatively more within the home or in fewer activities, not traveling as much. Um, it's very important to take care of yourself first. Mm. I think that's fantastic advice and really timely. And I think, uh, for one, you know, the pandemic has reminded us that there's no such thing as no change and you can't take security for granted. And it's shaken a lot of people, I think. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, Nimrata and Renuka, we really loved having you on the show and you've introduced some fabulous new perspectives that I think our guests will um, absolutely take a lot of um, advice and great tips from. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us. All right. And uh, just finally, if you're, uh, you know, if you're not living under the rocks, you would have seen the, uh, you know, cards against the Shameless insanity. plug time. That's right. So if you, if you don't know much about it, I'll put the link or you can just go and Google cards against insanity and you'll come across this fantastic tool that you can, you know, get for yourself or get it for somebody, uh, you know, who can, who needs some help. But thank you again, Renuka and Imrata for waking up at really ungodly hours and, uh, and still looking, uh, you know, more, uh, more presentable than I am. Um, <laughs> you know, so thank you again. And also for those, uh, obviously this is today's Dashera, which is the 10th day of a, of nine day festival. I miss my, Indian folk dance Garba, uh, you know, heavily. Um, but today is the Shira. That means that today is the day that Ram killed Ravan. So make sure that you are able to kill at least one career demon. Uh, 
uh, today. <laughs> um, I've just prepared a doodle for it. I'll be posting it soon for you to get some ideas on how to and what career demons to kill. But thank you again, Nimrata and Renuka, for coming along on the show. And uh, next week, well, we don't know who is coming next week, but I'm pretty sure that it will be, you know, whosoever will come will share a lot of wisdom. So until we see you, on Friday, next Friday, which is 22nd of this, uh, October, not December. Uh, stay safe. Uh, please get vaccinated if you are eligible for that so that we can start to meet people in person as well. So until we see you next Friday, have a great weekend. and Bye for now. Bye, everyone.